Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder and today we're going to do a test on what helps or hinders forming a smoke ring. The first question that I'm asking myself when I'm doing this experiment is ultimately what is a smoke ring? And a smoke ring essentially forms when the myoglobin in the meat, and myoglobin is that pink stuff. So if you have a steak and you let it sit out, there's this watery pink stuff. Well, that's myoglobin in the water. It's not blood, because blood contains hemoglobin. If it were blood, it would be deep and dark and red, but instead it's myoglobin. And so meat is pink because of the myoglobin that's present therein. Now what happens when you're smoking meat with a wood fire, or charcoal, or wood chunks for that matter, is you're producing heat and you're producing a majority of carbon dioxide and water vapor. The same is produced in a propane grill, yet a propane grill doesn't give a smoke ring because there are no byproducts. Now the byproducts that produce the smoke ring while you're smoking meat with a wood fire are carbon monoxide and nitrogen monoxide. And so those, what they do is they essentially they bind to the myoglobin that's present in the meat and retain its pink color. Because myoglobin, when you heat it up to 170 degrees, turns brown and it's game over, there's no pink left. So the smoke ring is just the reaction between carbon monoxide and nitrogen monoxide with the myoglobin present in the meat. And the question we're trying to answer is, how do different treatments affect the smoke ring that does form? Because when you're barbecuing for hours and hours and you've invited people over, it's always really disappointing when the product doesn't turn out the way you want. You want to see a nice pink smoke ring because it tells you this is something that's been smoked and the people who know, know that this is the sign of real smoke. So, as part of the presentation, not necessarily any part of the flavor, because the smoke ring doesn't necessarily have any flavor component that would be different than if the smoke ring, smoke ring weren't present. But in order to figure out how to get the biggest smoke ring possible, I've done five separate treatments on these steaks that I got. And because I didn't want a lot of fat interfering with smoke ring development, I got top sirloin, which is pretty lean, and we'll get a good idea of how thick these smoke rings will be. So let me break down the five different treatments I've used on these steaks. So the first one I did is soaked only in water. Now I soaked a couple of these others in different stuff, which we'll get to in a minute, but I wanted a control. So that's something to compare everything else to, because I didn't want a different result simply because these steaks had been soaking in liquid and this one had not. So this is the baseline that we're basing everything else off of. The next one I did was I froze a steak. And I've always heard, though I've never tested it before, that the colder the meat is, the thicker the smoke ring will be when you smoke it. And this seemed logical to me because the myoglobin will retain its pink color before it reaches a high temperature and gets cooked and turns brown. So I thought that the colder the meat, the further in the smoke could penetrate before the meat comes up to a temperature at which it will no longer remain pink when exposed to those two compounds. The third steak I did in just salt. I covered it in salt because I wanted to see if salt has any effect on the smoke ring depth because we as barbecuers are using salt on our meat all the time so I wanted to see what effect that might have. Now this one right here number four is a steak that's been soaked in baking soda and so I wanted to see what kind of effect pH has on the formation of a smoke ring. Now, we could get into the chemistry of what happens when carbon monoxide and nitrogen monoxide, aka nitric oxide, dissolve in water, uh, but I think that's a little too in-depth for this video here. But know that changing the pH will have some effect with how those compounds um, actually interact with the steak and presumably the myoglobin itself. So, this one is in baking soda, which is a pH above 7. Um, I tested the solution as a pH that was a little higher than 9. And then finally, our last steak right here is one that's been soaked in acetic acid, aka vinegar. And so that's a much lower pH, uh, probably somewhere around two. So these are the five steaks that I'm going to use. I'm going to throw them all on the smoker right next to each other so they're exposed to the same smoke, the same heat, and we have as much consistent as we possibly can. So it's time to throw them on and see what happens. All right, so one final thing is I took toothpicks and put them in all these steaks. So they got a little piece of duct tape on the top and they have a, uh, a letter telling me which steak is which so I don't get them confused later on and make a mistake in how I report the results.
So I put the steaks on the smoker back there and I put them on at 275 because that's the temperature I always smoke pretty much everything at. And so I want that to be something consistent so I can apply that hopefully more directly to the actual barbecue that I do. Now my hypothesis as to what will happen is kind of wishy-washy. I don't really know. My guess would be that the biggest smoke ring would be on the steak that's soaked in baking soda. Uh, the second biggest smoke ring would be the frozen uh, steak. Then I think the salt and the water soaked steaks are going to be pretty close to tied. And then uh, the steak soaked in vinegar would be the least smoke ring. But it could be the complete opposite. That's just a complete guess on my part. Now the reason this is important, well I already talked about you want a good presentation, but the reason it's important to understand this is because there are lots of different treatments that people put on the meat that they barbecue. You might use a marinade and it might be a basic marinade based on what you put in it. It might be acidic based on what you put in it. Or you might use a binder on your brisket before you smoke it. Maybe it's mustard. Well, mustard has a lot of vinegar in it. So understanding how this affects the smoke ring can be important to the smoke ring that you attempt to create when you smoke your next meat. Okay, so we're breaking all the rules of making steaks. I don't usually make the steaks in the smoker. I don't cook them at this temperature. Uh, and it's not about cooking steaks. What it's about is determining how to produce the best smoke ring possible. And so in order to achieve that, I'm going to be cooking all of these steaks to 170 degrees internal because I want any meat that's not pink because of the smoke ring to be clearly brown because I want as clear a distinction between the pink smoke ring and the brown cooked meat in the middle as I possibly can get. And so for that reason, they're all going to be well done steaks when we pull them off. And hopefully by doing it this way, we get the best information so that you and I can both produce the best barbecue that we possibly can with the biggest smoke ring that we can achieve. 130, still got a ways to go on those guys. But these are looking nice and red and smoky. All the ones except for the one that's got a lot of salt on the outside. Hmm, interesting. Our, uh, our duct tape didn't really hold up, now did it? Should have figured that one out, that was a bad idea. All right, it's the next day. The light got away from us last night, so I cooked these steaks to temperature and then pulled them off, stuck them in the fridge. It shouldn't have any effect on the smoke ring at all. And so at this point, we're ready to cut into them and see what kind of smoke rings we made. All right, so I'm going to cut into this steak that's been soaked in water. We're going to take a look at this smoke ring, and that's the baseline to which we're going to be comparing everything else. All right, now the frozen steak. Next, the salted steak. All right, so the ones that we've looked at so far, it doesn't look like there's much of a difference between any of the first three, between the water soaked, the frozen, and the salted. The frozen looks like it has a little bit of extra pink in the middle, even though it was cooked to 170 degrees. It could be that a tiny bit of that myoglobin was kept pink, but I doubt it. It could just be some kind of variation in the meat. There's a clear smoke ring on the outside, but those three look pretty similar. I'm curious to see what's gonna happen with the one soaked in baking soda and the one soaked in vinegar. Next, baking soda. All right, next, vinegar. All right, now, cutting into all five of these steaks and looking at them, I think that I was wrong now on second inspection about the first three being the same. I think the first two were the same. The water soaked, and the frozen. So if we take these and look at them, we see water soaked right here, frozen right here, 
and we put those smoke rings together. They look pretty close. Um, the water soak might be slightly thicker, maybe, but they're pretty darn close. Now, if we take the salted right here, I've got salted, you can see the smoke ring is just a shade smaller. Not a huge difference, but just a shade smaller. And then if we look down here, we grab the one soaked in baking soda. It looks mm, on par with this one right here, the water soaked. And that's our standard. Looks about on par. So for those three treatments, there isn't much of a difference. Um, the frozen one may be slightly thicker than the other two, maybe not. It's not absolutely clear. But the one thing we do have clear evidence for is the one soaked in vinegar baby smoke ring in comparison. They're all cooked the same way at the same temperature, but this one smoke ring is much less pronounced than any of the other four. So what that tells me is that whatever kind of marinade or base um, I'm using to put rub on, I want to make sure that it's not too acidic because if it's too acidic like this, the smoke ring will be much smaller than I would like. So I think we got some good information here. There wasn't quite as much variation as I thought that there might be, but we did get some usable results so that we know that meat likes to be cold and moist to attract a smoke ring and it doesn't like something that's too acidic. Now, when I cook a brisket, I spray it with apple cider vinegar, but I don't do that until about three hours into the cook. And at that point, the smoke ring has already been formed. There's not going to be any more forming of a smoke ring. So spraying with vinegar doesn't do anything to hinder smoke ring formation. So if you're thinking about how you're planning your next cook and if you're trying to make sure you get a good smoke ring, I would say stay away from anything too acidic and make sure you put your meat on cold and moist. Now, if you guys have done experiments on what produces a better smoke ring versus a worse smoke ring and you have some information that you think would be helpful, please leave those in the comments down below. I'd love to see that. Also, if there are any other experiments you'd like to see done on my channel, leave those in the comments below and I'd be happy to try those. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video by clicking the like button down below. You can also subscribe for more fun and informative barbecue content. See you next time.